We are looking at the poet Stanley Kunitz. Stanley is so special to Poets House, mainly because he's one of the co-founders along with Elizabeth Cray. And his work, tr tremendous, tremendous work, has always inspired not only Poets House readers and Poets House uh, members and people who just come to Poets House, but he has inspired so many writers over the years. He even really has what he affectionately and they affectionately call his tribe of poets who have studied with him, read his work, and have really been a major part of his life and he has been a major part of their lives and their careers as well. Today we're going to look at a poem that he wrote that actually tells a little story. We're going to look at a story poem, if you will, this morning, something that tells a little story. One thing that you should know about Stanley is that he lived a very, very long life and wrote for many, many years, probably at least, I would say, 80 years of his life. He, he was writing uh, at a really powerful level. This poem is called Halley's Comet, right? He's one of the only poets you may ever read or know that actually lived long enough to see and experience two Halley's Comets. And this was an experience he wrote around the first one that he lived through. Halley's Comet. Miss Murphy in first grade wrote its name in chalk across the board and told us it was roaring down the storm tracks of the Milky Way at frightful speed. And if it wandered off its course and smashed into the earth, there'd be no school tomorrow. A red-bearded preacher from the hills with a wild look in his eyes stood in the public square at the playground's edge proclaiming he was sent by God to save every one of us, even the little children. Repent, ye sinners, he shouted, waving his hand-lettered sign. At supper, I felt sad to think that it was probably the last meal I'd share with my mother and my sisters. But I felt excited, too, and scarcely touched my plate. So Mother scolded me and sent me early to my room. The whole family's asleep except for me. They never heard me steal into the stairwell hall and climb the ladder to the fresh night air. Look for me, Father, on the roof of the red brick building at the foot of Green Street. That's where we live, you know. On the top floor, I'm the boy in the white flannel gown, sprawled on the coarse gravel bed, searching the starry sky, waiting for the world to end. Stanley Kunitz, Halley's Comet. This one is one of my favorites. This one he wrote for a good friend of his, the painter Mark Rothko, the artist. His paintings grew darker every year. They filled the walls, they filled the room, eventually they filled his world, all but the ravishment. When voices faded, he would rush to hear the scratched soul of Mozart, endlessly in gyre. Back and forth, back and forth, he paced the paint-smeared floor, diminishing in size each time he turned, trapped in his monumental void, raving against his adversaries. At last, he took a knife in his hand and slashed an exit for himself between the frames of his tall scenery. Through the holes of his tattered universe, the first innocence and the light came pouring in. The artist, Stanley Kunitz. This poem by Stanley is called The Snakes of September. All summer I heard them rustling in the shrubbery, outracing me from tier to tier in my garden, a whisper among the viburnums. A signal flashed from the hedgerow, a shadow pulsing in the barbary thicket. Now that the nights are chill and the annuals spent, I should have thought them gone in a torpor of blood, slipped to the netherworld before the sickle frost. Not so. In the deceptive balm of noon, as if defiant of the curse that spoiled another garden, these two appear on show through a narrow slit in the dense green brossade of a north country spruce, dangling head down entwined in a brazen love knot. 
I put out my hand and stroked the fine, dry grit of their skins. After all, we are partners in this land, co-signers of a covenant. At my touch, the wild braid of creation trembles. The Snakes of September. I want to share one more poem of Stanley Kunitz's work with you this morning. This is from The Collected Poems. This poem is called The Layers. I have walked through many lives, some of them my own, and I am not who I was, though some principle of being abides from which I struggle not to stray. When I look behind, as I am compelled to look, before I can gather strength to proceed on my journey, I see the milestones dwindling toward the horizon and the slow fires trailing from the abandoned campsites over which scavenger angels wheel on heavy wings. Oh, I've made myself a tribe out of my true affections, and my tribe is scattered. How shall the heart be reconciled to its feast of losses? In a rising wind, the manic dust of my friends, those who fell along the way, bitterly stings my face. Yet I turn, I turn, exulting somewhat, with my will intact to go, wherever I need to go. And every stone on the road precious to me. In my darkest night, when the moon was covered, and I roamed through wreckage, a nimbus-clouded voice directed me. Live in the layers, not on the litter. Though I lack the art to decipher it, no doubt the next chapter in my book of transformations is already written. I am not done with my changes. Stanley Kunitz, The Layers. So I went to his house and it was, it, it I was, you know, it was like, I was 20 years old. And it was like, holy, you know, it was really, it was fantastic. Was he super, super nice? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 